we uh, wait for another two minutes? Yeah, another two, another two minutes, sir. Yeah. People are just joining, so I think we can begin now. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so good evening and a very warm welcome to all of you present here. Uh, I'm glad to let you know that we have representation from uh, individuals and institutions, including schools, colleges, research and government organizations, NGOs, uh, experts from various cities across the country, and especially citizens of Udaipur. Uh, we thank you for taking out time for today's discussion uh, on Udaipur water supply management and its issues and challenges. Uh, so this is our ninth webinar among a series of webinars on water resource management for sustainable development and the role of citizens. So this initiative is a part of a national agenda and commitment to achieve sustainable development goals and also conserving water. Uh, I'm Shireen, a research fellow with Development Alternatives, and I'll be moderating this session for all of you today. Uh, so this will be an interactive session, and we deeply encourage students and our youth to feel free in sharing your ideas, knowledge, or any other comments that you have. Uh, and before we begin, uh, let me quickly share with you the housekeeping rules. So please, please keep your mobile phones in silent mode. Uh, keep yourself muted when you're not speaking. And uh, if you want to speak, please raise your hand. Uh, you can also put in your questions or any other comments in the Q&A box. And you can also make use of the chat box. So you can write your name and name of your organization's mm -hmm. comments, thoughts, or any ideas in the chat box. Uh, also, please note to select all panelists and attendees while writing something in the chat box. And uh, we'll arrange for making your audio, audios and videos on during the interactions if, we, if needed. So without much delay, may I request Ms. Geetika Goswami, Senior Program Director of Policy and Planning Domain from Development Alternative Group for the welcome address to introduce all of us to this webinar series. Uh, so Geetika, uh, floor is open to you. Thank you. Thank you, Shireen. Am I audible properly? Yes. Yes, you are. Okay, so now uh, thank you, Shireen, and really very well, warm welcome to all of you to today's webinar. And as Shireen already mentioned, that uh, this is a series of uh, webinar that we are organizing for every fifteen days. And uh, Shireen, can am I audible? Because yes, uh, yes, Gitika. Yes. You're, you're audible. Yeah. Okay, because someone has just sent a message on no voice. Uh, 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 just uh, Shubham, please look at it. Else facing this issue because I can hear Kitika really loud and clear. Yes. Okay. So, so as uh, Shireen has already mentioned that uh, this is uh, this is a, a webinar that we are organizing every fifteen days. And there are eminent speakers all across the country who are uh, actually uh, uh, coming and you know delivering a lecture, giving their suggestions uh, in these webinar. So uh, and this is the ninth. Uh, this is the ninth webinar, and we'll keep on uh, doing it uh, as per plan. Another three more. But if you are really interested, we can continue this webinar because through this webinar we are actually. Uh, uh, reaching out to many, uh, many, many people. If we would have done it in a in-person or physical workshop, might not be possible for uh, you know uh, reaching out to so many people. And we are getting uh, this uh, audience. 
So now, uh, if I just um, uh, talk about a uh, very briefly about DA and our work in water. So DA, as uh, many of you already know, is a development alternatives. Are um, we are working uh, in this uh, sector for last uh, four decades. We are actually uh, completing our 40th year this year uh, in November. So it's a it's a great a great achievement from that point of view that uh, DA is been working and we have actually uh, sort of started working before this internet and now uh, still continuing our uh, work. Our main uh, uh, karma bhumi where we actually work on ground uh, for last uh, more than three decades is Bundelkhand. It's a it's a semi arid region also very uh, underprivileged uh, area where you know water availability is less human uh, human development index is really low uh, agriculture is also you know very challenged because because of people are only depending on the rainwater and uh, the irrigation facilities is very low and even if people are uh, depending on rainwater in bundelkhand the problem is that we are uh, having uh, not less rain, we are having rain, but it is actually pouring in a very short period of time with huge, uh, uh, you know, intensity. So the, the most of the cases, it happens that we are, uh, the water goes drain out and it's our, uh, you know, the, the, the benefits that should have been uh, done <coughs> by this rain was not was available. So we uh, started our work with, uh, you know, first and foremost uh, work we started on agriculture and water, water resource management. So our, uh, the initially we started on water augmentation and uh, so that we can really catch the water, the rainfall which is there. So we have, we are one of the pioneer of the Czech dams development in Bundelkhand. And still now we are doing, we have huge success on that. Many of our villages, you know, almost 400 villages where we work, uh, they were uh, once a time, it was only single crop, but now uh, almost all villages are going uh, getting double crop. <coughs> Sorry. And uh, it's not for the rural uh, areas where we are working. We are also working in uh, urban and peri-urban areas. We have a uh, couple of years, we have been working in the city uh, water management, city water resource management. We have worked in four cities. Udaipur is one of them. Along with that, with, along with Udaipur, we have worked in Teradun, Bhubaneswar, in, and also in uh, Jhasi, Orcha, uh, and Ujjain. There we are actually started uh, looking at that. How is this uh, water resource is being delivered to the consumer end? So what was the kind of, you know, amount or quantity of water which is getting extracted, how it is getting supplied to the consumer and what kind of, you know, uh, sort of uh, quantity of water is getting wasted during the supply. <coughs> Sorry. What are the kind of energies that is being used for extraction, for treatment and for supply? How are we, uh, how are, what is the status of the wastewater treatment? Are we really uh, treating the wastewater even if there are some of the cities are having a good number of STPs, but are we really using that wastewater? So those are the different kind of issues that we have worked uh, in uh, this uh, six cities. Right now in Udaipur, we are actually focusing on, you know, how can we really work on the city water resource management? Because Udaipur is a lake city, there, the, there are more surface water, but due to the pollution for, you know, ages, it has, uh, you know, a lot of these rivers are still not flowing. So our agenda of this webinar is to reach out to people, to reach out to the government and to work together along with the citizen. How can we really work on ground and see uh, and uh, show some impact on uh, the water availability of cities? Because all of you know that uh, we are in India, though we were really 
you know, privileged of having so much of rain, so many rivers, so many lakes, but we have really, you know, mess up with our water, surface water especially. So it's now a sort of, you know, awareness. Uh, almost all of us are aware of that, but we are still not doing <coughs> our bit. So this webinars is basically to just reaching out to people, talking to the government people who are in the frontline worker, how can they help us? What are the challenges? How can the communities and the uh, citizens be, can take part of this? So this is what, you know, the main agenda of our webinars. And we are going to start our on-ground activities in Udaipur, maybe from next month onwards. Because of pandemic, we could not do much on-ground work. So we'll be meeting, we'll be working with the communities there in Udaipur along the Ayad River to, uh, to actually show some impact along with the Udaipur citizens, obviously. And our today's speaker is also an, a former government official of Udaipur. And with, uh, uh, from him, we will get to know what are the issues, how can we really address those issues and what is the role of uh, CSOs and communities and so on. So thank you so much and over to you, uh, Shirin. Uh, thank you, Gipika. That was a very informative and inspiring as well. Uh, so now I would request my colleague Tanya to give a brief presentation about BA and set the context of today's webinar. Over uh, to you, Tanya. Thanks, thanks, Shirin. Uh, good evening, everyone. So Gitika has already given introduction about the uh, DA. So I'll move forward to the uh, uh, some technical solutions uh, of water testing that has been developed by uh, Tara and DA. Uh, so uh, moving forward with some technical solutions, the first one is Jal Tara water quality testing kit, which has 14 parameters that are very important to analyze the uh, and study the health of water body. Next are a few customized kits like aqua check vials, which helps in analyzing the bacteriological contamination of the water. And the other kits are for testing heavy metals like nitrate, iron, etc. So these kits have been very useful in a lot of our projects like Clean India Mission, which uh, rolled out a few years back in studying the health of water body and mapping the water quality as good, bad, very bad, depending upon the contamination of water. So in order to make any program successful, it is important to train the community as they are the primary stakeholders and receptor of, receptors of the technology. Uh, so for this, we organize various training programs in which they are trained on checking the water quality in their region. Uh, the picture in the far right depicts the scheduled water testing in a village and, uh, and maps the amount of contaminated water. So these are few activities that have been conducted for the community in various regions of India. Uh, we conduct knowledge aptitude practice survey to assess the perception of the community towards the uh, technology and treatment of water resources. And after that, we develop training packages for a community depending upon what aspects the attitude needs to be changed. Uh, we have also done some training programs in schools like of MP and Delhi uh, NCR region as well. We also have a Radio Bundelkhand facility where we disseminate knowledge to people who do not have access to uh, mobile phones and TV. The issues taken up on the radio are uh, uh, water, agriculture, sanitation, education, and livelihood. So moving forward with our mandate, we have designed a series of webinars which will focus on developing capacities of the stakeholders who are engaged in management of water resources and also consumers who use water. Second is to inculcate a positive uh, behavioral change um, among citizens and train the community and youth to adopt a uh, innovative technology that can help in efficient management of water resources. So far, we have conducted eight webinars on various themes, which brought together eminent experts of water sector uh, from CII, CSC, uh, GIZ, Shiv Nagar University, and PhD Udaipur, to name a few. So a brief about the project. Uh, the project focuses on integrated water resource assessment of Udaipur district. It has been funded by a Department of Geosciences and Natural Resource Management, University of Copenhagen. 
the project period uh, is of three years, which has brought together partner uh, partnership with various organizations and institutes like uh, University of Copenhagen, Geological Survey of Denmark, Greenland, Vidya Bhavan, Polytechnic Institute in Udaipur, BHI, and Development Alternatives. Uh, the project is uh, very important and relevant for Udaipur as the district is facing various water challenges like increasing pressure on water resources, inadequate water supply, sewage diversion to lakes, etc. So the overall objective is to improve the basis for developing sustainable integrated water resource management in the Udaipur district. So if we see the macro picture, the project aims to involve all stakeholders um, in scientific management of water resources, application of citizen science initiatives, like Marvi and address SDG goals as well. So if we see the agenda of today's webinar, which talks about Udaipur water supply management, it is important to note the demand for water has been increasing day by day and meeting the demand has been getting difficult. In the past, water demand in Udaipur in 2014 was uh, 115 MLD and, and only 85 MLD was sup uh, supplied with a deficit of 30 MLD. In this year, water demand uh, uh, is 139.60 uh, and a short production is estimated to be around 99.30 MLD with a total deficit of 40.30 MLD. Uh, projected water demand for year 41 is estimated to be 185 MLD uh, with an assured production of 134 MLD and a total deficit of 85 MLD. So uh, seeing the current situation of the increasing water demand, uh, and gap in production. It becomes even more pertinent to uh, initiate a, a dialogue and provide innovative solutions by involving stakeholders and citizens. So without any further delay, I now request Shireen to take over from here and introduce uh, Mr. Chitoraji and our guest speaker for uh, today's webinar. Over to you, Shireen. Uh, thanks, Tanya. So before we move ahead, uh, there are a couple of questions in the Q&A. Tanya, you might want to uh, look at that. Uh, so moving on, um, I would like to introduce our guest speaker, Mr. Nirmal Chitoraji. Uh, so he is a technical advisor for Center for Development, uh, Communication and Studies. Uh, he was a former additional chief engineer for Public Health Engineering Department, Government of Rajasthan, Udaipur. Uh, he was also director for uh, Udaipur Smart City Limited. Uh, he's presently a member at personal capacity of hand pump sectional committee of Bureau of Indian Standards. Uh, he has also authored a book uh, naming participatory rural appraisal and he's also a national level trainer on wash related activities uh, now may i invite mr chitoraji for his interactive section with all of us sir please good afternoon uh, all of you and uh, i thank i give thanks to all the panelists and the especially da for giving me opportunity to uh, give some light, put some light on the Dr. Water Supply Scheme Management issues and challenges. Now, I'll share my screen. So, I... We will uh, talk today on uh, the Zodapur water supply management as uh, already Sharon told about it that uh, uh, and Tanya was also saying that fact sheet of the Udapur. Uh, we will discuss some uh, especially on the is uh, visible this uh, sheet? PPT is visible? Yes, sir. Yeah. So we will talk uh, on uh, water web of Udapur as uh, we were already discussing this it is a city of lakes and uh, all the uh, rivers. And we'll uh, talk on timeline of Udapur water supply scheme, how it has been developed and what's going on, on some salient features of uh, Udapur water supply scheme, issues and challenges, and some remedial plans, and uh, especially rules, uh, role and uh, responsibility of citizens. It's just uh, I'm uh, putting uh, initial words. I think we can say this Udapur water supply on the Udapur water supply scheme. So people who are participating can know about it and uh, may we'll discuss afterwards after this presentation. 
uh, these are the famous uh, city uh, this famous city of lakes and these are the famous lakes especially this uh, lake pichola lake patay sagar lake jasmine and uday sagar and many other lakes and these lakes are uh, not only uh, providing us drinking water but also uh, providing udaipur uh, economy as uh, it is a tourist city and these lakes are attracting people uh, foreign tourist as well as uh, local tourist uh, to visit this place and uh, so this is uh, not only this uh, this is uh, not only providing us uh, water but also uh, economy also dependent on the on these lakes so it's necessary at this juncture that uh, this lake should al- always remain have uh, full tank water and people can come and uh, enjoy and also at the same time people will get the water so this is i'll just uh, uh, show you this uh, web of udaipur we can see water web as uh, here in the udaipur city uh, in the 14th century from the 14th century this uh, water wave was created this around uh, eight lakes are here which are all are interconnected and uh, we can give credit to uh, rulers of uh, mewad ranas and maranas that uh, they have created such a a uh, beautiful system or uh, we can say it was the first in country or uh, in the world they showed that how to link rivers and uh, how we can use optimally the water of uh, what runoff water so i'll just show you that these are the rivers one is uh, where cursor i am moving this kotra uh, river amarjok river and they are uh, coming to sisarma river and the lake pichola is here and the lake pichola and near the lake pichola one uh, small lake kumaria tala uh, rang sagar lake and surup sagar all these uh, four are connected and uh, one is uh, gordon sagar lake which is also connected from pichola by in canal system and uh, this is a uh, uh, fateh sagar lake uh, which is uh, on the upstream of fateh sagar one lake is known as badi lake and on the morwani river from a uh, overflow of the badi lake is coming to the fateh sagar and this pichola is also connected with the fateh sagar or uh, at certain level pichola water can be transferred to the fateh sagar uh, lake and uh, in the last century or uh, 19th century uh, this uh, uh, this all uh, overflow or access water from these lakes go to the ayad river this is the ayad river and uh, in 1890 this ayad river on the ayad river one uh, this check chikal was is here on the top side of the slide uh, chikal was one dam was created uh, constructed on the ayad river and the water has been transferred through a canal to the fateh sagar and uh, this is still this all these uh, valves is functioning that is the beauty of the system and this water all uh, ayad river is uh, going to the uday sagar lake which is also a good lake uh, around 11 mcft lake and uh, <coughs> to uh, maintain water in the uh, Uh, these uh, lakes some uh, additional construction was uh, done uh, after independence and i'll just show you this one uh, red line is here this run red line is uh, great indian divide line which is it is dividing the basins this is udaipur basin or we can say banas basin and uh, this side western part is uh, savarmati basin so if any runoff is in the udaipur basin or banas basin it reaches to the arbian sea and uh, water dropping here in the western part it reaches to the oh uh, sorry uh, this is uh, this udaipur water goes to the uh, bay of bengal 
and this uh, deva side or uh, this western part water is going towards uh, arbian sea so because uh, this uh, ayad river is a tributary of uh, bedach river and bedach river is a tributary of uh, banas river banas river is a tributary of chambal river and chambal is tributary of uh, yamuna river and uh, yamuna goes to ganga and ganga from ganga water goes to the bay of bengal so this is a great uh, indian divide line uh, we are lucky enough that we are here on the just uh, uh, along udaipur is uh, this is the udaipur udaipur is situated along this uh, ridge line and uh, in early uh, days uh, because uh, one more thing i want to share that uh, this sabarmati basin in udaipur district uh, three four basins major basins are there uh, one of the major basin is the sabarmati basin this uh, around covers around 30% area of the udaipur district and this water goes to the uh, from uh, not coming to the udaipur side it is going to the uh, gujarat and then gujarat to uh, uh, this uh, arbian sea so one uh, this devas project was conceived uh, earlier in uh, early days and this uh, water has been uh, transferred from sabarmati basin to uh, this uh, udaipur basin or banas basin to meet out the shortfall of the udaipur town or udaipur district so we'll discuss uh, something more in uh, next slide so these are the just uh, we'll go through the this slide lake capacities uh, initial construction of the lake was started in 14th century but uh, afterwards uh, this was improved in uh, 1559 and this is a 484 uh, mcft capacity uh, for drinking water purpose we can use uh, around 251 uh, mcft from this lake and one uh, badi lake is there what we talk on morwan uh, morwani river that was constructed in 1643 and uh, its uh, gross capacity is uh, 370 mcft uh, its water is uh, being used uh, generally in drought time or an emergency only otherwise it is uh, used in uh, some uh, small irrigation purposes uh, 1687 this on the downstream of badi lake fatehsagar lake uh, is was constructed and it has capacity around uh, 428 mcft and uh, usable uh, water is around uh, 211 mcft uh, one is uh, 1685 uh jasmon lake was constructed it is around uh, 50 km away from uh, uh, udaipur on the southern side <coughs> it is a big lake uh asia is one of the biggest uh, man made lake uh, it is uh, 14650 mcft uh, water there and uh, out of this uh, Uh, for drinking water purposes uh, reservation is available for uh, of uh, 525 mcft uh, then uh, what i was talking in devas 1 was uh, constructed in uh, 1971 uh, it has uh, around capacity is 126 mcft and uh, this water is uh, diverted to the lake pichula and uh, then it is used for uh, drinking water purposes it is around 72 uh, mcft per year uh, we can transfer and uh, average monsoon and then uh, one more dam on this uh, uh, sabarmati basin uh, devas 2 was constructed uh, under the devas 2 scheme two dams were constructed akodra and madri dam and with the tunnel of uh, around uh, 10 kilometers tunnel was constructed and from the tunnel uh, through tunnel the water is coming to the udaipur uh, pichula lake and uh, out of this 387 uh, mcft gross capacity a uh, usable water for drinking purpose is around 217 mcft and in 2007 one uh, mansi vakal uh, one dam was also constructed in the sabarmati basin area uh, on the uh western part of uh, that india uh, great divide line and this uh, dam was constructed uh, of uh, 862 mcft capacity 
and uh, this was uh, constructed uh, in the partnership with the hindustan jing limited uh, with the 30 70 ratio 70% uh, is uh, for phed and 30% uh, for hindustan jing limited so from this uh, dam uh, around uh, 333 mcft uh, water we can use uh, on annual basis uh, this is a timeline for uh, of udaipur water supply scheme uh, udaipur water supply scheme uh, was introduced after independence uh, in 1967 in between 60 and 70 uh, it was uh, initially based on uh, traditional sources and uh, which were mostly bowdies step wells were there in the city and thereafter uh, this uh, lake pichola and uh, lake fateh sagar uh, were included as a source uh, filter plants were constructed and basic infrastructure was developed in uh, 1970s there was one project was implemented to divert uh, water from uh, sabarmati basin to lake pichola and uh, it was started in 1976. Uh, in 1980s, uh, uh, seeing the shortfall of Udapur uh, drinking water of, of Udapur town, the irrigation was stopped from uh, this Pichula Lake and Fatesagar Lake. And it was now it is uh, purely for uh, drinking water purposes and uh, other this uh, recreation, etc. And then uh, during this uh, 80s, Mansi Wakal Dam was sanctioned, uh, but stopped due to protest. And uh, Jasmine wa project was also sanctioned uh, to bring water from Jasmine Lake, which is, I told you, 50 kilometers uh, away from the Udaipur. Uh, but it was also delayed. Uh, and uh, in 1995, this Jasmine project was commissioned. Uh, and the Mansi Wakal project was commissioned in uh, 2007. It took around uh, uh, more than uh, 25 years to complete this project due to uh, protests. And then uh, in uh, 2011, uh, uh, in between 11 and 20, uh, there was second project was commissioned. And uh, now this uh, last year, this year, 2021, uh, Jasmine augmentation project uh, was sanctioned uh, by the state government of costing rupees uh, 215 crores. Uh, salient features of the Udaipur uh, uh, water supply scheme. Uh, this uh, Udaipur is a, a municipal council and five peripheral villages are uh, connected with the Udaipur water supply scheme. That are, These uh, villages are uh, Savina, Titardi, Shobakpura, Huana, and Bedla. These are all uh, nearby villages and area is around 64 square kilometers, average rainfall uh, 600 mm. Uh, area covered with water supply system is 75%. Uh, uh, population of town uh, was uh, 4.93 lakhs in uh, 2011 as per census. And at present, uh, projected population is around 6 lakhs. Uh, water connections in the town is uh, 96,400 uh, uh, individual household connections. And water supply uh, this is in the uh, slum area and uh, other part uh, by stand post, public stand post 103. Uh, major source, as uh, we talked, uh, these four are directly this uh, Pichola, Fateh Sagar, Mansi Wakal, and uh, Jasamon Lakes. And two indirectly sources are uh, this Devas 1 and Devas 2. And one in emergency use, that is uh, Badi Lake. <coughs> so uh, besides this, uh, 54 tube wells and uh, 27 open wells and uh, bowdies are being used. Uh, then uh, 230 single phase uh, tube wells, which are spot sources, uh, along with the uh, around uh, 2500 hand pumps. And uh, to provide the drinking water to the city, uh, there are uh, 10 uh, water treatment plants of different capacities in different areas. Uh, that is, the total capacity is around 83 MLD. And uh, with the treatment plants, there are uh, 24 uh, 
clear water reservoirs uh, having capacity 22 ml million liters <coughs> and uh, water is being distributed uh, through service reservoirs uh, they are here in the overhead reservoir or uh, ground level uh, reservoirs on the small hillocks that is uh, 61 uh, such reservoirs of uh, 53 million liter capacities so it is around uh, uh, 45 percent storage capacity available at present uh, daily demand present daily demand is a uh, 139.6 mld and whereas uh, production present production is uh, 99.3 mld so at present uh, deficit is around 44.3 mld to reach uh, 135 liter per capita uh, daily supply to improve uh, to maintain service level uh, deficit uh, at present is 44.3 mld uh, we'll uh, talk on uh, availability and uh, draw of water so from pichola availability of water is uh, 41.90 MLD, <coughs> out, uh, out of which 19.5 is uh, of on uh, Pichola, then Devas 1, uh, 5.6 MLD, and the, from Devas 2, 16.8 MLD uh, is diverted. So at present, uh, uh, drawal capacity is uh, 26.8 MLD from Fateh Sagar. <coughs> It is 15 uh, MLD, Jasaman Lake, uh, 20.5 uh, MLD, Mansiwakal Dam, it is uh, 27 MLD, and underground sources, it is tube wells and uh, open wells, 9.8 MLD. So, totally uh, 99.30 MLD uh, with the 109 uh, service level. <coughs> uh, proposed drawal uh, will increase uh, uh, by 2020 at uh, 22 uh, next year uh, as uh, one treatment plant is under construction uh, under a smart city so that then the drawl will be around uh, 113 mld against the assured availability 135 mld and by 2026 uh, drawl will again increase to uh, 135 mld <coughs> as uh, I told you the one project uh, to augment Jasmine uh, uh, Lake from the Jasmine Lake. This uh, augmentation is uh, proposed. So the 41 MLD uh, availability is uh, Jasmine is there. So uh, in the 2026, it will be around uh, to 41 optimum capacity. Uh, these are. Uh, uh, picks of uh, water treatment and uh, gas chlorination plant. Uh, water quality assurance on uh, monitoring. Uh, all uh, clear water reservoirs and WTPs are uh, provided with uh, gas chlorination, chlorine gas chlorination system. And uh, <coughs> at one of the plants, the chlorine dioxide plant is also uh, uh, working. A regular chlorination of water is done with uh, bleaching powder at uh, pumping stations, uh, wherever CWR uh, with the pump stations are there. And dedicated team is available for uh, regular monitoring of uh, water quality. Uh, daily water samples are collected for uh, bacteriological con contamination and uh, checking for uh, residual chlorine at consumer end. <coughs> and uh, immediate, immediate uh, corrective measures taken if uh, necessary and uh, lab is available uh, full uh, well equipped lab is available at Udapur to do all this uh, uh, test uh, now we'll talk so, about uh, water post <coughs> as we are bringing water from uh, different different sources uh, some sources are very far some are very uh, down level so our uh, this uh, PhD is uh, expenditure level of OM is uh, annually around uh, 66 crores. Uh, it is based on the 2018-19 data and a recovery of uh, uh, water through revenue is uh, 22 crores. 
So it is around uh, 34 percent uh, first recovery is uh, in the Udaipur water supply scheme. <coughs> Uh, we'll take the cost uh, per kiloliter. Uh, then uh, this direct to IM cost is uh, 19.65, out of which 40% uh, of the expenditure goes on the power supply only. Uh, and then <coughs> uh, indirect uh, cost depreciation is 4.74. So per kiloliter water coming to the city is around uh, costing is uh, 24 rupees 39 paisa and uh, as uh, non-revenue water uh, is 40 percent at present so if we calculate through that then the cost comes to 40 uh, rupees 65 paisa uh, as per government uh, domestic water tariff rate for the urban area is uh, uh, 0 to 8 kiloliter is uh, rupees 1.72 uh, per kale, then uh, so from 8 to 15 is telescopic rate and the maximum rate for domestic is uh, 5.5 rupees uh, per kiloliter. So, uh, it is true that uh, government is uh, subsidizing the uh, water cost. So, the cost recovery is very low. Uh, we can say that uh, safe water is uh, basic to human life and it is social good up to the lifeline consumption and we can say the lifeline consumption is up to 15 kl uh, per household <coughs> uh, to be provided at affordable tariffs and beyond this level it is to be treated as economic good to be produced uh, to be procured at its economic price so then this change uh, government should bring that uh, subsidize the rates may be given up to 15 kl otherwise uh, above the 15 kl uh, rates may be as per the uh, whatever cost uh, expenditure cost is there of the water to bring uh, to supply up to the consumer end uh, these are the performance indicators <coughs> this urban uh, bench level marking uh, government of india uh, says that for water supply performance uh, nine indicators should be uh, uh, monitor also coverage of uh, water supply connect coverage coverage of uh, water supply uh, in the city is uh, uh, 75 percent against 100 percent uh, per capita water supply is uh, 109 against uh, 135 lpcd extent of uh, non revenue water it is uh, approximately 40 percent uh, in udaipur against the uh, 20 percent <coughs> Uh, non revenue water means jo uh, water supply kar rahe and uh, we are not getting revenue uh, government is not getting revenue out of it uh, main reason uh, of N, uh, nrw is uh, uh, one is uh, leakage uh, pipe leaking in the pipelines and second is uh, illegal connections and third is a uh, major uh, reason is uh, metering improper metering so if three can improve, then uh, this non-revenue water can be reduced and uh, it can be uh, bring in the range of 20 or 25 percent. Extent of metering is uh, in the city is 45 percent, uh, 45 percent functional. Otherwise, uh, uh, one good thing in Odapur water supply scheme is here no flat rate connections except uh, PSPs. So, if these meters are being is uh, meters are replaced then uh, it can be uh, uh, improved system can be improved uh, then continuity of uh, water supply uh, benchmark is 24 hours uh, here in odapur uh, due to some uh, we can say improper distribution system uh, it is uh, supply is uh, only 1.5 to 2 hours in uh, 48 hours that is a big challenge. Efficiency of uh, redressal of consumer complaint uh, benchmark is 80%. It means that uh, any complaint uh, received and which can be resolved in uh, 24 hours, uh, that is uh, benchmark is 80%. Against it, 60% uh, 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 complaints are redressed. Then uh, quality of water, uh, 
uh, it should be 100%. It is uh, around 99.9%. Uh, cost recovery is 34%. And efficiency in collection of water charges. As uh, tariff is low, so uh, even uh, collection is 90%, then also uh, cost recovery is uh, only 34%. Uh, these are the three uh, major projects which are uh, sanctioned or under exhibition. One is uh, uh, under a smart city, Udapur Smart City. Uh, here, uh, one the water treatment plant of uh, 23.47 MLD with the uh, SCADA system is uh, under construct under exhibition, and uh, 90 kilometer pipeline replacement and uh, this 24 hours supply in the Wall City area or ADB area, ABD area. Uh, it says area based development area. Uh, and this work is going on and uh, we hope that uh, uh, by 2022, it, this all works will be completed. And uh, this the wall city area will get 24 hours supply instead of uh, what they are getting at present, uh, two hours and 48 hours. So one small part or uh, you can say 20% uh, of the area of the Udapur town will get uh, 24 hour supply. Then there's uh, one scheme, South Extension uh, UIT scheme, uh, which is having a WTP of 6 MLD, which is under tendering process. One is a Jasmine Augmentation uh, Project, replacement of uh, old pipeline and uh, augmentation of production from 21 MLD to 41 MLD. And one more uh, WTP is proposed under this uh, project. And now we just uh, go through the water demand. Uh, Udapur, this is a population uh, which is with the uh, uh, five existing peripheral villages and uh, new 46 villages may be added with the city as these are the urban peripheral villages. And along with the uh, uh, population is projected for 2051 is around 31, uh, 13 lakhs. A deficit of uh, demand, demand is calculated domestic, industrial, institutional, tourist, and floating population. <coughs> 2051 will top, then uh, assured production we have at present is uh, 134 MLD. Uh, required will be 258 MLD, and the uh, deficit will be 124 MLD. So that will be a very uh, horrible situation uh, if we uh, see it present. And uh, we, if we uh, calculate in the MCFT, then 2051, we will require uh, around 1600 uh, MCFT net uh, demand per year. And uh, we'll talk on a few distribution uh, problems. Uh, these are the, uh, one of the major problem is illegal connections and uh, long distance connections. Uh, connections having uh, 10 meters, 20 meters, or uh, more than 20 meters in uh, uh, small lanes. Uh, so they are not getting, uh, due to the long distance connections, not getting the uh, desired pressure and desired quantity. Equitable distribution of water in different zones. <coughs> uh, Non-equitable distribution. A low pressure, short supply, and talent problems. Incidence of water pollution uh, due to breakage of pipeline during digging of a uh, road for construction of different utilities or uh, due to chalking of sewer in some area sometime. Increase in uh, demand of new water connections from inhabitants due to reduce yield in yield of groundwater in their own uh, tube wells. Uh, one study says that uh, around 30% uh, people are having their own tube wells. And uh, when the rainfall is less and recharge is groundwater recharge is less, lesser, at that time the yield is uh, poor of their own uh, sources and they are demanding for a uh, new water connection. Uh, water supply to the area developed by private colonizer in the outer area of the city. 
uh, in the last webinar we were discussing uh, the master plan of the udaipur town but <clears throat> this town is developing not as per the master plan so uh, wherever uh, these agriculture in the agriculture agriculture land private colonies are developed and uh, <clears throat> that is the their water supply is a big issue uh new colonies developed by uit is also of uh, water supply for this colony is also an issue uh increasing number of multi story buildings and developed or undeveloped area uh wherever uh, plan was uh, for uh, 3000 square feet area then we see that uh, 10 story building is there so uh, demand is uh, uh, multiplied by 10 folds so at that time the water uh, distribution or water management and for this multi story building is uh, issue <coughs> and uh, we talked on uh, high non revenue water and uh, water wastage at wastage at uh, kanjimar and is also high uh, some uh, suggestions or uh, remedial plans <coughs> uh, derive uh, one drive to be uh, identify illegal connections uh, and disconnection or regularization of them if we can regularize uh, this illegal connection the revenue will increase and nrw will be reduced or otherwise this connection should be disconnected so uh, the legal consumers get proper water reduction uh, in uh, water losses in production and improve pumping efficiency uninterpreted power water supply <coughs> uh if the power supply breakage is there then water supply is disturbed so then the distribution is also disturbed uh distribution system improved improvement by providing additional pipelines small dia ferrule installations pressure equalizer uh replacement of leaking walls so overall this uh, system is to replace the all uh, old pipelines uh in some area due to a uh, more populated area in the some uh, extra additional distribution is also required <clears throat> and these uh, ferrule connections uh, there may be possibility that uh, bigger size ferrule are installed so a small dia ferrule can be installed uh, for each household connection so uh, at uh, optimum level uh, water may go and uh, in the desired quantity water can be distributed uh, one more thing is the uh, quality of material and quality of construction uh, if quality of material is uh, as per specification and construction uh, quality is also better then this uh, leakage problem will be reduced and the pollution uh, problem will also be reduced uh, pollution control measures in distribution system uh pollution control measures in uh, catchment area of lake catchment uh, treatment on the regular basis and uh, most important is uh, 24 by 7 call center to receive uh, complaints <coughs> and uh, complaints uh, resolving protocol should be there so it can be uh, uh, people can get relief uh, immediately uh need of the day is uh, reduce or uh, recycle and reuse uh, the 3r uh, are to be implemented uh, one does uh, reduce demand and improve uh, water efficiency uh, because uh, as we are seeing that uh, since 1960 uh, we are uh, chasing the demand and demand is increasing we are adding source again and again and again so if we can manage our demand we can uh, reduce our demand up to certain level uh, then we can uh, <coughs> uh, fulfill our uh, requirement of the city and uh, water use efficiency is also to be increased uh, wastage of water to be prevented or a recycle and a reuse is the most important part uh, under this uh, smart city uh, three stps uh were constructed 
this water of the uh, stps uh, treated water should be used in the industry so industrial load can be reduced on the udaipur water supply scheme and uh, the same on the same time this uh, treated water uh, can be used for uh, plantation and uh, gardening of udaipur town uh, this is uh, one of the good example in udaipur is uh, at uh, international udaipur international airport dabo where uh, this uh, uh, waste water they are using it uh, with the biotechnol biotechnological uh, treatment plant and uh, using for uh, gardening uh, and other purposes so such uh, uh, methods can be used adopted in uh, other uh, area of the udaipur also and the other thing is uh, earlier uh, one stp was constructed by hindustan jing limited and uh, the treated water is being used by the uh, industry at uh, dariba mines so that is uh, around uh, 50 km away from the uh, udaipur uh, this treatment plant site so this uh, zero waste uh, or maximum water use uh, should be done in the industry or uh, zero water waste uh, technology uh, should be adopted and the long term solution uh, uh, we can suggest here that uh, the udaipur sagar lake is uh, on the downstream of the udaipur on the eastern part or uh, the capacity of udaipur sagar lake is uh, 1100 fct uh, used uh, for water used for irrigation is around 650 mcft <coughs> remaining uh, four mcft water can be uh, used for drinking water and uh, regeneration can be made <coughs> second most important uh, is the uh, construction of uh, devas uh, project third and fourth to divert water from sabarmati basin to uh, udaipur basin and uh, at the 75% dependability 724 mcft uh, available water is available and uh, 434 mcft uh, is net usable water and one more uh, proposal is there that uh, on the downstream or uh, this is the devas 3 and 4 what uh, we are talking uh, this deva udasagar and this is the mansi wakal fourth which is proposed to divert uh, water from uh, here to uh, uh, pali and uh, uh, pali and uh, siroi district and in in this uh, mansi wakal fourth Uh, if uh, water uh, around uh, 1700 mcft uh, can be reserved for udaipur so if it is uh, it can be done then only uh, udaipur water supply this deficit uh, uh, shortfall can be meet out uh, for 2051 so these are the most important these uh, projects on the government should take up on the priority this devas 3 and devas 4 and one is uh, water regeneration in the mansi wakal fort uh now the role of citizen is uh, very important in uh, managing the demand uh most uh, important thing is awareness uh, on the water should be there uh, we are lucky in the udaipur that uh, many eminent people are uh, talking on water and to prevent uh, pollution in the available lakes uh but uh, it is well citizens should also be involved in uh, water uh, reducing the water wastage and save water so under the this uh, saving of uh, there are two three important points we can talk on this uh, one is the uh, water saving habits second is uh, if any citizen uh, see any pipe leakages uh, government pipe leakages they should inform immediately to the uh, call center uh one more important thing is uh, at his own house if any plumbing is le- leaking it should be repaired immediately so they can save water uh, they can reduce wastage uh, replacement of water uh, water meter uh, if required at his own home and pollution control measures especially uh, timely replacement of uh, uh, service connection pipe 
because the service connection pipe is uh, mostly uh, of the GI pipe, uh, GI pipe, and which are uh, rusted with the aging. So uh, maximum uh, water leakage is from this service connection pipe. And uh, if citizen is aware, they can replace their uh, service line and uh, they can uh, prevent the uh, pollution as well as uh, water pressure and uh, other uh, neighbors. Uh, involve uh, students and uh, knowledge sharing on water. Uh, adopt uh, rainwater harvesting techniques at home, office, school, industries. Uh, rainwater uh, harvesting is to be adopted uh, to uh, catch the rain as uh, uh, DA team was talking earlier and uh, drive to minimize pollution and uh, catchment of sources. So pollution uh, will be reduced. Uh, reuse of water in industries, gardening, flooring, flushing, etc. And important point is uh, constructive use of water. Uh, if they're on a uh, tube well, uh, is having uh, water quality uh, not as per the required parameter, then uh, they can use uh, that water for uh, other than other domestic other than domestic purposes. And from for the domestic purpose, uh, citizens can use water uh, uh, from uh, uh, water supply scheme. And uh, also the water quality monitoring on the regular basis with the FTKs is uh, important. Uh, this, this is this was the salient features of the as uh, we discussed, and this is for the water managers. Uh, this uh, I have seen uh, earlier, 30 years back, that uh, if once you carry your own water, then you will understand the value of every drop. So if water managers can uh, see this, if they can uh, reduce uh, the leakages of pipeline and uh, improve the efficiency of uh, water use, then uh, water will be produced. And uh, what we were talking this uh, rooftop or uh, rainwater, rainwater harvesting system to recharge the groundwater, uh, to use the groundwater, uh, to rainwater, and to prevent the dropping from the pickup. So save water and produce water. So, it was the brief uh, description on the Udapur water supply scheme. Uh, we have discussed some issues. And uh, thanks for uh, uh, patience listening. We all love Udapur and we, can, we all can uh, do something for Udapur. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you so much, sir. It was a very informative session. Uh, and thanks for giving us an in-depth insight into water web of Udaipur and also uh, how the water system has evolved over the time and uh, key issues and challenges faced by uh, the city and also throwing light on remedial planning and how citizens can do better. Uh, so uh, we'll quickly move on to some uh, questions. Uh, we have a lot of questions pouring in uh, the Q&A &Q and also the chat. Uh, so we have a question from Prahlad Parikh. So can we have his audio on uh, IT team, please? Um, before we get on to the questions, can I just say two words? Yeah, sure. Uh, sure. This sure. is a very interesting um, uh, presentation from uh, the, the Mr. Nirmal Chitoria. And last, last week, last presentation also was very interesting. We heard from two other speakers from Udaipur. One talked about rainwater harvesting, uh, Sajal uh, uh, Jal program, which looked at uh, the entire uh, water management from the planning perspective in rural areas. And the last one was more towards waste manage, wastewater management as well. And this one is more towards how do we ensure uh, city level, smart city level drinking water as well? So uh, my uh, my my uh, su suggestion to this team and whoever is asking. So this uh, this webinar is a exploratory webinar, and a lot of questions were posed, which are very very relevant. And uh, as a team of uh, the the Anida program that we are working with uh, Vidya Bhavan Polytechnic, that is what exactly Vidya Bhavan started working with. 
cities citizens uh, in terms of understanding what do they think and uh, we have uh, they, they uh, also participating in this uh, webinar and i would like him also to answer some of the citizen aspirations from the study that we have done recently uh, he started off uh, at some point they they please come on board and uh, there are several number of questions on that second point is uh, mr nirmal uh, can we can you also throw light on how do you see all these line departments coming together because it is not one phd taking on the job which you described and there were questions on planning processes how the planning is getting uh, implemented the, for, the, for it to happen uh, in a holistic manner we need to have all the line departments so uh, you can throw light and uh, in the last webinar we decided that we will be showcasing this uh, the in integrated approach um, in one or two words uh, as we go along as a part, part of the project so some of the questions from ajit uh, ji can be answered in that light thank you yeah thank you vijay uh, uh, lakshmi ji uh, yes uh, it is a uh, very difficult uh, to integrate uh, all the departments and uh, to bring uh, at the one platform uh, but uh, regular meetings or regular uh, uh, programs can uh, we can do we can improve something uh, because it is we, on a in a day we can't uh, integrate all the departments as uh, all are working uh, separately since uh, long many years so but uh, for a small uh, just uh, we see uh, uh, for the catchment area improvement uh, we can uh, add watershed department and we, uh, for the water supply phd irrigation and uh, this watershed development department and this uh, nagar nigam we can sit together and uh, do something uh, but slowly it will improve uh, thank you uh thank you sir uh next up uh prahla can we have your question please yeah my my question is rather it is a point of discussion uh i listen i am very very uh, want to give a congratulation to nagar chitrasa he has given a brief and a complete picture of the way for the chitrasa system but my uh, suggestion and my kind of uh, issue is water management is now the time uh, for uh, discuss and to manage rather than production and consumption because water is very scarce we cannot produce the water so now the time has reached when we have to manage the water rather to uh, concentrate on production and consumption Because production consumption is a uh, basically a technical solution, so we have to in 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 a uh, in a uh, in a large go in a uh, if we want to go ahead in the future, if we want to uh, achieve the SDG given by the UN, and we want to give the uh, our future our children water sufficient water and potable water. then we have to manage at this moment we have to start the management uh, uh, but uh, uh, da is doing uh, as far as we technical people people are there we are doing but what da is doing what is their participation uh, in the udaipur can you tell us over yeah so dr kevel would you like to answer that question so he was, he was asking what da is doing in order to bring water efficiency in udaipur uh, pratik if i am audible uh, we have started assessing the water water uh, distribution and uh, equitable distribution and technology status and how the city is water is flowing into the city and from there we moved on to start working with a team of people on hydrological management and which is a three year pro program right now in udaipur and uh, as dr nimal already mentioned we our findings are also showing that there is a 40% leakage and what we are planning to be, uh, do in going forward is 
uh, to in order to make sure that the water is um, uh, sufficiently available uh, it's not about da doing anything it's a kind of uh, studies evidence based studies that we are bringing together also bringing all the line departments we had a one round of discussions with all line departments we are bringing these experts together and uh, with vidya pawan polytechnic on the ground we are planning to start a process by which these studies uh, on hydrological uh, water quality wa water issues uh, are brought on board uh, real time sensors are going to be installed and we are going to help the uh, city planners and uh, in water management in a equitable way so that is what our future goal is so in the process in the next two years we are planning to have one small stretch where we will be showcasing water management involving the citizens main focus is on involving citizens while the technologies are uh, there is plenty of information technology what is not happening right now is coordination collaboration and uh, people participation and of course there is a need for a huge amount of uh, investments uh, as uh, mr nimal is talking about we can't chase the demand all the time we have to be uh, we have to be also mindful of how to reduce uh, the um, going forward by 2051 we saw uh, the how the pressures are going to go up and uh, it can only be tackled by collaborative work involving the citizens so technology is one only one area but intelligent planning and uh, making sure citizen pressure is there so our role with vidyan bhavan polytechnic is engaging our, uh, citizens and the people onto one platform and making sure that the udaipur city over a period of time becomes and then we have academy uh, academia who also join hands last webinar two webinars were very encouraging we hope we are hopeful that we will be taking it forward in the direction and uh, i see dr srikant raised his hand um he has also worked in udaipur for a long time i uh, maybe um, tanya you can take him his question first before we go ahead Pratik, uh, we can also have a discussion with you one to one. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vijay Lakshmi. Uh, uh, so we have a hand raised by Shrikant. Please go ahead. Shrikant, Dr. Shrikant, unmute yourself. Or uh, put your still, yeah, you're still on mute, Doctor Shrikant. So if you could put your question in the chat or the Q and A. Q and A, I'll put. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you're audible. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, Chitra. In long time, I've seen you. Okay. Uh, I have some few questions which you will answer. Do you have a real time monitoring of water quality of the lakes as well as uh, real quality surveillance program? Uh, is one question. because any permanent lake monitoring stations have been there it could give you real time monitoring uh, status of all the water quality issue that is one thing because nowadays iot has become a big issue and people are increasingly uh, moving towards iot area internet of things and uh, uh, many sensors have come in the country cpcb is also doing uh, sensor through this monitoring ganga with through the sensors they also got audit team which is uh, uh, going through whether the sensors are functioning in the right manner or not that's a world bank project also there in this context is there any plan in udaipur to do the real time uh, surveillance of lake okay and also real time <coughs> surveillance of water distribution system as a surveillance program of the drinking water there are two these are two different question but interlinked yeah mr shrikant uh, i would like to say that uh, bhd has uh, installed on the trial basis one real time uh, water quality monitoring system uh, at one uh, of the filter plant okay. and uh, under which uh, these uh, four parameters uh, this uh, ph uh, tds and uh, acetyl chlorine uh, are being okay. uh, monitored mm -hmm. so if it is successful then uh, they can extend it uh, to all the uh, filter plants outlets or uh, in the town also it can be displayed at some places and uh, regarding a uh, lake 
i think uh, this uh, one uh, lake conservation uh, body is here uh, they are doing something uh, for this uh, purpose yes thank you okay now our second question is you said about treated waste water for industry yeah uh, reuse of uh, sewage water which is being treated and uh, now the, there is many concept which could be easily done one is you have got this marble industry where the water requirement would be more can this the sewage water if it is passing through ro and other thing and remove and removing all the calcium and other thing uh, you can still get a water of industrial quality which could augment your water supply and also cater to the industry can this be explored as a social enterprise rather than government driven project because any government driven is uh, full of bureaucracy that goes on as a social enterprise you got ro enterprise now waste water as a enterprise this is my interest current interest no, it is uh, interesting interesting to know your uh, uh, this uh, question that uh, this uh, waste water treatment is uh, can be a uh, social enterprises or yeah. here in udaipur uh, under the smart city uh, this hindustan jing limited as a uh, implemented this uh, constru constructed this three uh, stp plants of around uh, 40 lpc uh, 40 uh, mld plants and it was on the uh, hem basis a uh, hybrid annuity uh, management best mode basis and uh, under this uh, they have, there is a they have uh, put on the condition inter uh, uh, instead of uh, interest on the money they will take the water yeah. uh, treated water so it is a uh, just uh, what you are saying just like that and that water can be used uh, they are uh, searching i think ki how to uh, manage that treated water because uh, now it is uh, their own property of around 40 mld they can uh, give to the industries so mm -hmm. that can be explored very well it is a good thought sir. <clears throat> if i may add here uh, can you can you hear me yes kitka go on. so uh, i mean we uh, as uh, you know in the introduction i already said that we are working in five six uh, cities where we are uh, you know trying to map out how the water is being extracted being delivered to the consumer end and what are the kind of non revenue water you know how are the energy being used and so on we also uh, at the same time has done some research on how this wastewater can be treated you know there are a number of uh, startups uh, they are uh, working uh, there are different methods there are low cost methods available where how this uh, wastewater can be you know treated and uh, come into the uh, uh, cycle so i mean when we are coming to udaipur and we will be you know sitting with these government officials talking to them we we have all those research ready with us which we can share with them maybe we can come up with a uh, with a solution where this is this water circularity is now the need of the hour that uh, maybe we can start and as uh, you know dr kb dr vijay lakshmi already mentioned that uh, there is a two government two um, universities we are working with who are working on that Uh, water uh, uh, water uh, management of ayad river so they are using the sensors and they are also uh, you know uh, getting the data so they are using the mikeshi model they will come up with uh, some solution which will be used for the ulbs on udaipur and uh, so i think we are just uh, starting this uh, work and will be really happy to Have uh, have you on board for all this kind of discussion, and we can come up some solutions. Uh, hopefully, yes. So, Thank Mr. Uh, Shrikant can tell us something about uh, new technologies because he is uh, involved in uh, uh, development of uh, technologies. So, he can uh, put few words on this STP, new technology in STPs. Mr. Shrikant. Perhaps he is uh, not there. Okay, please go ahead. Yeah, 
thank you so much, Gitika. Uh, so, Zainat, you had a few questions. Should we uh, take this up here or? Uh, maybe. I had a few questions actually. I'm sorry, I joined in a little late, but I did have some questions. One uh, was, uh, you know, I think maybe from the from the end, I think there is a lot of dis uh, discussion. Thank you, uh, Nirmalji. It was a very useful, interesting presentation. But the question that was into my mind were: you spoke about recommendations about action for citizens uh, that citizens could could should take that would support the water supply management. But what one doesn't know is to enable the citizens to get engaged. Uh, there are two things which, in my view, we would they would need as a common citizen. One is information, regular information, communication. And the second is a support system. Uh, you know, information about access, uh, about, about what's, the, what's the quality of water, how much is it available, where is it going. So status of the water in your city so that that excites the citizen or in these, you know, creates a little bit of a motivation. And then if you want to do something, then the behavioral science says that you need the infrastructure and technical support system to do that. I mean, you need the regulations on one hand, but you also need the infrastructure and support. Zinat, aapka voice. Sorry, I think my uh, my uh, link was yeah. So so is there a mechanism? Is there a mechanism that the city is putting in place to do both of these? Uh, uh, does the municipality of Udaipur create these systems to support the citizen? That was a question I had. Yeah, thanks, uh, and uh, it is uh, your good suggestions and. This can be implemented, yet not uh, implementing. Uh, there is no such uh, committee in which uh, citizen can uh, sit there and uh, to say something. Only this uh, municipal committee, municipal council is here, and the municipal council is uh, meeting for water. So such committee can be formed, or uh, for especially for drinking water supply. Otherwise, for the lake uh, preservation, some committees are there. So, but for the, especially on the drinking water issue, uh, I think uh, there is no such uh, committee uh, which can be, uh, which can come ahead for, uh, for this uh, solution. Thank you. The second question I had was in this, in the space of making more water available. So, you know, you discussed about the linkage of the streams and mm -hmm. diversion of water from, from one to the other. So when we are doing that, where we are we are looking at the availability and the requirement for the city, how are we looking at it from the perspective of uh, the ecosystem services that might be disrupted yes. from the source? So just this stream se hum pani le rahe hain, waha ka jo EIA hua ho, not just because that is that then that becomes a limiting factor for a future 10 year, 15 year, 13 year uh, perspective. Uh, and number one is the current um, environmental uh, sort of information about that and the stress and the thing about future. Is there a climate risk assessment for those new sources that we are talking about? Yeah, there's a feasibility study is uh, still going on uh, on these uh, projects. So after uh, completing completion of this feasible uh, feasibility study uh, for these projects, uh, the same will be implemented. And finally, the third question, and you rightly pointed out that the city has not developed as per master plan. And I think uh, all of us planners know that no city in this country, in fact, I would say 18, 80, 90% of cities in the world don't develop according to uh, designed master plans. In fact, when master plans become redundant the day they are made, the city has already grown beyond it. So yes. are there mechanisms uh, that the city is thinking of, the city planning system is thinking of, which could be more guideline based so that you and, and water resource becomes one of those guidelines. So you develop according to those guidelines rather than according to a defined uh, static plan. Uh, you're uh, saying uh, very correctly, but uh, 
uh, especially uh, for uh, what supply managers or what supply uh, developers it is difficult to uh, provide supply in the uh, unplanned area because uh, for the electricity line we can uh, uh, put the line uh, in the electricity power lines but uh, for the water supply uh, pura hi usko design karke aur pura wahan pahunchane ka it is a very difficult part so that's so, why I'm, i was saying that uh, it is a uh, big threat for uh, water supply managers so then i think it comes back to the technology issue of uh, of the question are there decentralized or smaller zone or ward level solutions that may be looked at even for supply i know waste management people do look at and that's become a new new norm but even for water supply what is the uh, i mean how, how much can we be, can we downscale it rather than centralizing and scaling up so that, yeah. that flexibility is there i mean here there is one mr puneet pandey who raised his hand he has a point i think he is asking how companies can participate in water and waste water management in this objective of this uh, webinar uh, not just the webinar but the uh, we are all in it together not just uh, Ms. we don't have questions only to uh, mr uh, <laughs> nirmal can answer okay. all of those i think uh, we have uh, taken the initial steps and the last three webinars we had the uh, fortunately everybody said we are going to be and in the inception meeting uh, the city government is now willing to work with the citizens not just now they have been working but there is there should be some kind of impetus now i think uh, uh, mr puneet pandey if you can raise your uh, if you can unmute and say something how you, if, i don't know whether you are from your industry yeah sure how you can participate yeah so good afternoon one and all uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity i uh, joined uh, a little bit late so pardon me if i'm repeating the question or repeating the lines but as nirmal sir was very uh, correctly uh, saying about the participation of uh, corporates uh, especially in helping uh, bodies for uh, technologies that is related to water and waste water right so uh, i i visit udaipur several times i am from the industry and i think uh, there are several technologies like sbr and mbbr already that are being adopted at udaipur right so for uh, advanced technology better than this or uh, depending on situation can be a mb technology which is also utilized when you have area constraints so my question sir here was that uh, we are having treatment for stp right but while doing this treatment we generate uh, some sludge or waste that is uh, has to be discarded so now uh, plenty of op uh, treatment options are also available in this world wherein we can uh, use the waste to energy concept and can generate biogas from the sludge that is being generated which is as of now i think uh, ulbs are sending this sludge to some disposal grounds so there are options available wherein we can recover biogas or can convert this into fertilizer or manure so this waste to energy or waste to research is also a very good option sir and technologies for the same are also available uh, thank you thank you thank you for giving me opportunity mr pulin can you just uh, sorry can you just uh, say where from you are which in the, which corporate you know your yeah 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 madam uh, my uh, my company name is ion exchange india limited and we are uh, working uh, very closely with industries in udaipur and in rajasthan uh, for the water waste water recycle and zld projects so that is why i requested that if if we can be of any help in supporting educating or creating awareness on water and waste water no, we will be happy to help if there is some presentation requirement for the general public also i'm not talking about business here i'm talking about the awareness for the public general public or whatever it is wherever even at in tiniest bit we can contribute no we are there you can utilize our expertise you, you can utilize our experts knowledge for creating awareness for getting the insights for doing the uh, 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 feasibility study etc so we'll be happy to help sir wherever we can we'll we'll make you part of our group as we go along uh, yeah, soon sure. after this webinar sometime yeah. in october geetika is right. going to plan a meeting with all the like minded people and where we will get commitments from both industry and citizens and our own uh, partners on the ground with vidya bhavan will organize this meeting we'll we'll right. go ahead uh, we'll take your coordinates and coordinate with you thank you right. thank you ma'am thank you uh, thank you uh, uh, sir and thank you dr vijay lakshmi so we have sheshadri ji's hand up uh, so 
you can have a session. And... Yeah, good, good, good evening to all. Can you hear me? Good evening yes, to all. Can you hear me? Yes, you're on. Yeah. Uh, good, good evening to Vijayashmi ji, uh, Zinat ji, and uh, Nirmal ji. Uh, thank you very much for giving me an opportunity. See, most of the time, we always keep saying that we are not, we are doing this in the plan, we are doing this in the plan. But something very drastic should happen. And uh, this can happen only when, if we have some senior IAS man coming and doing something, or a political, uh, say, wizard who do something, only then something like a magic wand happens. And it really happens. See, I just saw the, I mean, I have been very, very frequent uh, visitor to Udaipur. And uh, many resorts we have been to, lake resorts. There is nothing like an STP, nothing like a treatment, nothing is there. It, they are just freely putting all the sewage into the, into the lakes. And we, we used to feel very bad. And another thing is, and as there are no industries around those lakes and around those places, we have only municipal municipal wastewater. So it is, uh, the pollutant is uh, something like a uni, uni type of, uh, uni type of mode. So, and you have so many small lakes, big lakes, network of lakes, network of sewage treatment plants. It all requires to be a little bit planned out and a lot of, lot of good things can come out. Just concentrate on a few lakes to be cleaned up and slowly, everyone will, everything will get cleaned up in a few years' time. And my only, my only, uh, say, cause for concern is on this. Thank you. Thank you very much. You are very much right, sir. We'll go ahead on that. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So, keeping in mind, uh, I think we are uh, ending this webinar soon. Um, I don't know whether Jaydev is still there. Ask him to speak up. Um, what is the, what are the aspirations of citizens? If he... um, I cannot no, see him. No, I can't see. Yeah. He's not there. Yeah. No. yeah. So we'll try to take up the questions in the chat and maybe uh, share it through email to all the registered uh, attendees. And uh, we'll also try to share uh, Chitoraji's uh, slides if it's okay with uh, him. So, uh, would it be fine if we share your slides with us? Attendees? Yes, yes. yes. Right. Okay. okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, so over to you, Tanya. Can we have the word of thanks? Yes. Thank you. Uh, uh, we had this quiz. Uh, are you not? Uh, uh, Jessica, considering the time, we have okay. decided to okay. uh, skip okay. the quiz. Yeah. So thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you so much, uh, Chitology, for sharing interesting presentation and a wonderful interactive session with us. I believe everyone enjoyed the session. And on behalf of DA team, I also thank Danita, who has supported us. And I also thank our knowledge partners, DHI, University of Copenhagen, Vidya Bhavan Polytechnic, Jaipur, uh, Geological Survey of Denmark, Greenland, Department of Science and Technology, Pani Water. Uh, we will be having more such sessions fortnightly till November 2021 with more fun activities. And please do join us in forthcoming sessions. Thank you once again for uh, to all of you. Thank you all. Thanks for joining. See you again. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you, uh, Nirmala ji. This Thank was you. really very interesting. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Soon we'll meet in Udapur, I hope. Sure, sure. We Next month, we are surely coming and meeting you there.